Well, Ulysses, it is one of our favorite episodes to do, and we have it today. Mailbag episode. That's right. We love our mailbags. And guess what? There is a voice memo on today's show. So let's get started right now. You are Locked On Rays, your daily Tampa Bay Rays podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, my name is Kevin Weiss. I'm Ulysses Sombrano. And we are the host of the Locked On Race podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Thank you for making us your very first listen every day. Be sure to check out and subscribe to your YouTube channel at Locked On Race, as well as all the other traditional podcasting platforms. And we love emails, LockedOnRays at gmail.com. Speaking of that, we put priority on the voice memos, and we have one right here today from... One John Voorhees. Uh, John Voorhees. Let's take a listen to that. Hey, Kevin. Hey, Ulysses. Hey, maybe Evan. Uh, I just want to say uh, I'm really interested to hear what your take is on the trades. I'm really excited about them. I think I think this is going to be good for us. I mean, I'm I'm sad to see Luke Rayleigh go. I'm sad to see Kittredge go. Um, but I think we got really good value for the trades. And I'm really interested to see your take on it. I know it's a it happened on a weekend when and and in the uh, right after the holidays. But I'm, I'm anxious to hear your take on it. Um, I think I think these are really good trades, and um, and uh, I think we really strengthened our, our fielding, which is uh, uh, frankly I, I think one of the the weaker points of the 23 se- season. So. 24 is, I think is, I don't know, man. I think it's, I th- I've got a good feeling. Anyway, uh, love the show. Always, always excited to hear it. Uh, and, uh, you know, let's, let's, uh, let's, let's have a great 24 season. Raise up. Yeah. Good to hear John's enthusiasm for the trade and, uh, the focus on the defensive aspects of what Palacios and Caballero could provide for the Rays. And I think that, like we mentioned earlier this week, ties into the Uwasawa signing of you need to guy, have guys who can catch and throw the ball uh, behind a guy like that. Plus the Rays, other young pitchers, be it Shane Boz and Ryan Pepio. And just to, to bring some comfort to uh, those individuals that Hey, it's not uh, a one man show here. You don't have to strike out anybody and everybody. You can rely on the guys behind you to uh, get some outs and to get through an inning here and there. Yeah, I think obviously the the traits do take into consideration the the defense side of it. I mean, you're not getting two sluggers in this trade. You know, you're, Mm -hmm. you're getting two guys that are defensive minded that could pop off with the bat, of course. Um, that have some track record in the minors with within the ball really well. Um, but yeah, especially with Caballero, you're looking a lot of, of what he can do defensively, second base, shortstop, third base, how he can move around. Uh, so I, you know, I, I think the 2022 team was worse defensively than the 2023 team. Um, but it's not like it was, you know, it didn't bother me, the defense, I guess, in 2023. I, I wasn't uh, annoyed by it, which means that it was good, usually. Yeah. Um, but can it be better? Sure. I mean, you can al- you can always tighten that up. But I don't know. Did you ever get a sense of, of hey, this is really sloppy play uh, in, in the 2023 season? Not, uh, not in particular. I guess it would have been better if you had – a healthy Wander Franco and others. If you had guys that, well, I shouldn't say healthy Wander Franco, but available Wander Franco and other guys who were healthy, like the main cogs, uh, I think that would make things a little bit less sloppy, but it wasn't something that was so egregious to the point of, I believe 2022, where the base running, it was so out in front of your face. 
I didn't have that impression or feel that, you know, the defense was terrible in 2023 or anything like that. So, yeah. And even like, you know, Taylor walls in 2022 was like making catastrophic errors. And he's a guy that's known for his glove, at least in the first half of the, of the season, he was maybe he tightened it up later on, but in 2022, 2023, I think it was okay. I think it was good. I mean, because when you look at who was playing, you know, Randy's going to be, Randy, he's going to be amazing catches, and sometimes he's going to look a little bit lost out yeah. there. You're going to take that. Siri, one of the best, um, you know, sprinters yeah. in center field and, and really, really good glove. Didn't now, I guess when we got to the playoffs and later in, in the season, we saw the the Manny Margot mess, and we saw yeah. some, some mishaps from Jose Siri, which, again, goes back to my point. If guys remained healthy, I don't know if we'd see those egregious errors as, as opposed to just coming back cold turkey and trying to – make a notable impact on that side of the ball. Honestly, I think defensively speaking, when you look at the infield, um, it's Brandon Lau and Yandi who might be the, the negatives out there. The weak links. The yeah. weak links. Yeah. Um, because on the other side, I mean, you had wonderful a lot, a lot of the season and then you have what Taylor wall. So you mm -hmm. feel pretty good about that. And in third base, we just did the player review for Isak. He's pretty much average at third yeah. base and he played mostly third base so it really is on the right side of the infield with brendan lau and yanni like can mm -hmm. can you tighten that up and as they get older the answer is probably not that's fair and then um with john's question just focusing on andrew kittredge and luke rayleigh a little bit i am uh, interested to see how kittredge who did agree to a one-year 2.63 million dollar deal with the cardinals avoiding arbitration um for him what it's going to be like playing to a team that uh isn't as successful as the rays of late i mean they came off a 71 and 91 season uh then again uh he probably is somewhat excited about the fact of playing in one of the premier and preeminent baseball markets that has such a i don't want to say rabid but passionate lovable fan base in all of baseball, like I think it's going to be a little bit of a, a culture shock in a good way of, wow, uh, Cardinals fans ride or die for this team. There's no bandwagons here. There's no Johnny come yeah. lately. No, uh, they are. They are going to be supporting this organization. Um, and then, you know, how he handles uh, being in a new clubhouse and uh, what type of role he's going to fit into. But you know, for him, I hope that he has success and is able to capitalize on free agency, having a strong uh, year leading into that. And it, it could be a, a case where, you know, not only is he just um, relegated to middle relief, he might get some save opportunities, some setup opportunities. Uh, so we'll see what happens with that. And then uh, for Luke Rayleigh, he's um, going back to the West Coast and the reports, uh, which it was funny with Rayleigh, like he got the call yeah. that he was traded while he was on his honeymoon. I think he was in a pool and he missed a bunch of text messages and phone calls. It's like, OK, should probably uh, check what's going on. Oh, yeah, I've been traded. I'll be moving from St. Petersburg to uh, Seattle. It's only, you know, 3000 miles, give or take. But, um, you know, he is going to a team that has a. Uh, I mean, like the Rays, not a home run friendly ballpark and T-Mobile nope. Park. So uh, it's just like it's I don't think it should be too much of a problem for him. Uh, it's it's more so, I think, with Luke Rayleigh to to be successful and to get in a groove. He just has to have he, he just has has to have that consistent, constant playing time, whether he's at first base or he's playing center field or he's playing corner outfield, which I think he's expected to do a lot of. He's got to get the reps to to get into a role um, as opposed to, Hey, being a, a pinch hitter two or three times a week. Yeah. But with Luke Rayleigh really, though, um, and, and look, he had a tremendous season, but when you look at his splits, uh, when you do post uh, and pre all-star pre all-star, he was hitting 270 with yeah. a 924 OPS. And then after the all-star game, he hit 219 with a 677 OPS. So is that fatigue? Is that the first time that he's actually had to play this many games? Um, is that something mechanically? Is that something mentally? You don't know. He yeah. knows that. And maybe and, and maybe there's a chance that he doesn't know what happened. Uh, but, uh, you know, a mechanical adjustment, getting tired, whatever it was, 
you did see the dip. So it is understandable that the Rays see that plus other stuff. I mean, this right. is a very easy thing to look at. Um, they have way more data and they can say, you know what? Do we trust that this is going to happen again for him? And maybe the answer was no, we don't mm -hmm. think so. So let's sell high. Yeah, no, that that's fair. And maybe the Mariners then again see something in him where, oh man, he was making this. He did something in the second half that he shouldn't be doing. You know, maybe it's, you know, going back to a leg kick and his his swing got a little elongated. I mean, it could be yeah. many many different things. Um, I mean, yeah, just based on the trade, it's like, I think we're fine with with letting go of Luke Rayleigh. I think something that the Mariners appreciate about him. Uh, is his the grittiness factor the factor that he will go all out he'll give 110 percent if you ask him to lay down a bond he'll lay down a bond if you ask him to to lean into one he'll lean to one if you ask him to to dive face first to to make a catch in left field he'll do that if if you need him to steal a bag or hustle or, or go from first to third like he he is he's got that kind of grinder bulldog mentality which um i think you know some teams maybe need a little bit more of that than others but as far as the trade goes like i feel like jose caballero has some more potential and could get a little bit better whereas luke rayleigh i don't think he's necessarily getting any better than he is i think that first half of the season was like a career first half season mm -hmm. um and i think that if you're able to cash in your chips while you can you go ahead and do that so um i i think it just worked out as far as a, a need for need want for want skill set for skill set deal which uh, is nice to see rather than just a, a pure salary dump and you said that's a that's a nice deal to see well guess what you can get to see a lot of nice deals when you use game time because when you use game time this is the only ticketing app that gives you complete peace of mind with your purchase you can see the view from your seat before you buy so you know exactly what to expect when you arrive and game time is obsessed with finding ways to help you save money on tickets. In fact, they have deal on tickets right up to the start of the event and even an hour after it starts. It's the place to find last minute seats. So today, take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code LOCKED ON for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code. L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N for $20 off. They've got deals on football, basketball, baseball, concerts, comedy, theater, and much, much more. So download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. You're on mute, sir. Oh, man, I'm on mute. I did it. It's the first time. I never do that. You never do that. I never strike out like Yandy <laughs> Diaz. <laughs> Never do it. Yeah. It's like when Yandi Diaz strikes out, it's like, what what happened what? here? What happens? When I'm on mute, that, that yeah. never happens. I usually uh, keep an eye on the pitch clock there. All right. Uh, this next final mailbag question before we get to baseball trivia name that war comes from Edward Kelly. And here it is. Uh, hi, guys. A big fan of the show from down in Australia. Love that. Uh, his comment here is, will we ever see the Rays run out a team of Xavier Isaac at first, Curtis Mead at second, Junior Caminero at third, Carson Williams at shortstop, uh, Asterix, Luke, Luke Rayleigh at outfield, uh, Josh Lowe outfield, Johnny DeLuca outfield, catcher, hopefully someone better than uh, Rene Pinto and D.H. Yandi Diaz. Uh, if you don't, who is the most likely to get traded out of this list for some more arms? Um, well, so that is the, the question from Edward Kelly, and I should note, um, I don't know if he was just asking in general if the Rays would ever run a team out like that or if he was having the expectation that it would be in 2024. Because I can tell you, uh, you know, we can take the Luke Rayleigh mess out um, Xavier Isaac isn't uh, going to be with the big league club this year. Yeah, no, 100% no. Uh, so, well, first, Ed Edward, thank you for writing to us. It's so cool that you're in Australia listening to us and watching us and hitting that like button and hitting mm -hmm. that subscribe button. Uh, thank you so much. It's so cool that, like, 
there's everywhere that you can we we got a message i think from nicholas from france um a couple weeks ago that he also listens to so, yes. you know people you know tuning in from every corner of the world that's one of the coolest things about um this podcast so thank you so much um okay no my that's my that's my my short answer is no i don't think yes. that's going to happen the infield it's pretty good though uh caminero a third shortstop uh carson second curtis first xavier isaac if i could see that for i sure. could see that in 2026 in like, exactly in 2026 i could see that in fact in 2025 i could see that if you trade xavier for yandi if you tell me yeah. in 2025 are we going to see caminero carson curtis yandi i would say yeah 2025 right. I guess maybe to flip the question or to add an amendment to it is how many of the position players on the roster or in the starting lineup are still on the roster when Xavier Isaac ultimately gets the call up to the show? I think that's how it should be flipped. Again, Luke Rayleigh, take him out of the equation. All the other outfielders, up for discussion. Um, You know, Josh Lowe, he's arbitration eligible in 2026. DeLuca, 2027. Pinto 2027. Um, what are th- what? Okay, what is the ETA that we're giving Xavier Isaac? I've seen everywhere from 2026 to 2028. So I would say liberally sometime in 2026. Ooh, so 2026. you would have to assume that uh, the Rays would pick up the team option on Yandy Diaz. Um, who knows? Yeah. Maybe it's it's Pinto or Dominic Keegan uh, at the catching position. Um, but I think that's. That's where the the question should be revolved around is how many players presently on the roster are still on the roster come, you know, mid year 2026, late 2026, early 2026, just whenever uh, Isaac gets that opportunity. I I, I think that I think the team believes in Kimonero. I think the team believes in Curtis Mead and. And Carson Williams, I would say Carson Williams. Yeah, those 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 three, I think, are the the next core. Um, cause let's look back. I don't think Randy's on the team in 2026. I don't necessarily <laughs> see Jose Siri no. on the team in 2026. No. Um, that's a good question on Siri. Um, but if you, let's take 2018, which was the revival of this race franchise, um, of winning baseball until let's say 2023. Because maybe I, th- it just feels like twenty twenty four is like this new age of of race baseball. Like that, like yeah. that was a window. That doesn't mean that the window is 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 closed. But there was like that. That has a specific core amount of players. Um, you know, Brennan Lau, Yandy Diaz, Mindy Margot, Randy Rosarena. Like that. That was the core group, right? In that twenty eighteen to twenty twenty three, could you see it, the next window? The core being Caminero, Curtis, Carson. Yeah. Yeah. I, I can definitely see that. Um, now you have to put some veterans around him. So is Isaac Predis is going Isaac Predis going to be there in 2026? I could see that. Um Yandi only has two more options though, right? So he would be off by 2026, correct? I believe he has a team option in 2026. So he would still be on the team. Okay. Or he could be on the team if the Rays pick it up. Okay. Okay. Decide, so- decide to cash in. Johnny DeLuca, uh, if if he's a guy that can pop off like uh, yeah. Josh Lowe, that's pretty good. And if Josh Lowe is going to be Josh Lowe um, that we saw in 2023, it's a pretty great athletic group that you've that you've created a core group of guys that you can build around. And, you know, I think the next step would be, well, with arbitration, those guys are going to get expensive. Uh, if Josh Lowe is going to be Josh Lowe, he's going to get expensive. Isaac Paredes, he's going to get expensive. But you have the added bonus now as a race fan to know, guess what? 2027, last year at Tropicana Field, that should be a new stadium. With a right. new stadium, that means new money. So that might be a worry that now as a race fan, when you're looking at 2026, 2027, the money factor might not be so prevalent as it as we're used to. We're right. looking at a guy that has an R1 of ARP four in in Paredes with 3.2. And we're like, Oh, he's going to get expensive. 
that might not be the case anymore in a couple of years. Yeah. Well, it also maybe depends on Wander Franco and true if he's not available, but you still have to pay that fat contract, uh, how that affects things going down the line. Now, out of all those names that Edward rattled off, uh, Luke Rayleigh aside, if we have a situation where all those guys are on the field at the same time, more or less, who do you think is the most valuable out of those guys when I that think, time comes? I think Camonero. If, 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 if everything yeah. lines up correctly. Some people might say Andy, but again, he would not be getting any younger. You you right. might see start to see him on the down slope where Camonero is way on an upslope, upslide. So, um, yeah, I would not be surprised at all if, if that eventually became the case. And also maybe a, a dark horse or – or wild card of Josh Lowe. We could see how he does this year and maybe make a determination based on that. Yeah. So, all right. Uh, good question from Edward. Uh, we have baseball trivia and name that war coming up next. But first, we have to tell you something very, very important. And that is this. Um, the NFL regular season is wrapping up, but there's still time to get in on the action with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. That's $150 in bonus bets, win or lose. The app is super easy to use, and there are many different ways to bet, such as live same-game parlays, an explore tab where you can find bets, and you can make parlays in the Parlay Hub, and so much more. So go ahead and visit FanDuel.com slash LockedOn, L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N, to make your first bet a layup. I'll repeat it one more time. FanDuel.com slash LockedOn, L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N, is the place to be. FanDuel, they are an official partner of the National Football League. All right, Ulysses, it is time. Baseball trivia, name that war. We have uh, the night driving bumper music going on i believe uh my question for you is rays related uh in front of me i have a list of the top 10 rays players in war not just war though but defensive war defensive war leaders for the Rays slash Devil Rays history, I need five of these top ten names. Defensive war. Now, do we have, by any chance, a limit of innings, a limit of games? No, nope, it's ballpark? just whoever racks up the most defensive war. You know, maybe you were amazing over the course of 150 games. Maybe it took you 800 games to to rack up some D war. Okay, so you want out of the 10, you want five. Okay, let's go with the easy ones. Kevin, the outlaw, Kiermeyer, Indiana bump. Clubhouse in the leader, despite uh, you know only playing 60% of the available games out there, he still racked up 17.7 defensive four. Hey, when you're that good of a center fielder, you only have to play 95 games a year, I guess. That's right, baby. Okay, so he's number one. Uh, let's go with... Evan, I'm so good, Michael Longoria. Number two on the list, 12.3. BJ up 10. Strike one. He was too busy lollygagging for balls that went over his head and then (laughs) arguing with Evan Longoria in the dugout after uh, half-assing it. Yeah. I'm going to go with... Carlos Peña. First base does not get the worm here. Strike two. Okay. All right, guys. Protect mode. Your Harold yeah. Ramirez. Protect the strike zone here. Come okay. on, Arias. Right? Okay. See, this is the thing. If I... I mean, you could go so many ways here, people. You could go Wander Franco, but I mean... You could go with Taylor Walls. That's only that's all the only thing he's done is defensive war, really, honestly. Let's be let's be truthful here. But is it enough? Wander, has he done enough defensively to be on this? But he's a shortstop, so. Um 
catching position. Mike Zunino, he could have wrecked up some war, but he's a catcher. Is that enough? Um, Carl Crawford, that would be a dumb thing to not say. I'd rather strike out with Carl Crawford than not mention Carl Crawford. So I'm going Carl Crawford. Smart decision number six on this list with 4.4 D war. 4.4? 4.4. So there's a big Ooh. drop off from KK to Longo to number six. Yeah. So if number six is 4.4, you gotta put Wander. Like there's no way that Wander's not there, right? Guys, guys, right, guys? Everybody, right, guys? Wander Franco. Wander Franco is incorrect. Uh, he's too busy doing other things, I guess. Oof. Uh, wow. All right. You're not going to uh, feel good about this one. Yeah, I'm sure I will. All right. Hit me. Number three on this list. No Chrome Ben Zobrist 7.8 D War. Oh, that hurts. Oh, that hurts my soul. I'm so Number sorry, Benny. Number four on this list. Toby Hall 6.4 or I still think he lives in the Lutz area last I checked. Uh, number five on this list, your favorite player of all time. You know him, you love him, you appreciate him. Taylor Walls, 5.4 D war. Number six on the list is Carl Crawford. Number seven, um, he actually uh, used to come to the plate with a two by four and didn't have a traditional glove, but used uh, construction gloves to field uh, the second base shortstop third base position joey wendell 3.9 d war number eight on this list actually oh my gosh i sold you short wonder franco is on this list holy cow i screwed this up you kind of (laughs) did you kind of did i want i win Oh my God, this is... Oh my gosh, this is a disaster. I'm sorry. Thank you. Thank you. All right, here's here's the exercise. You just had to name uh, four of the top 10, not <laughs> five right. of the top 10. So you went. Wander Franco, number nine on this list. Well, I'm trying to, you know, get Wander out of sight, out of mind as much as yeah, possible. Yeah, true. I see his true. name, I don't see his name. Yeah. Woo! All right, sorry, okay. folks. Ulysses, you completed life. the assignment. Bleep it. Her we're, air, we're user trying. air here. It happened. Yeah. Um, John Flaherty was tied with Wander Franco with 3.6. Also tied with Wander Franco and John Flaherty was. I'm going to try to guess this name. This guy played infield for several years in the Rays' heyday. I mean, 2000. Julio Lugo. Uh, no. Sean Rodriguez. Oh, okay. okay. So now I don't feel as bad. I gave you a little bit of a. Yeah, a little foul tip action there. Sean Rod. Kier- yeah, Kiermaier, Longo, Zobrist, Hall, Walls, Crawford, Wendell, Flaherty, Franco, Rodriguez. So, I mean, Sean if you want to, if you want to think about a really difficult name that war, I, I, I wouldn't blame you. If you want to go back to the drawing board here, <laughs> no, I apologize. Good. That is that is really bad on my part. That is all right. That is all right. Sean Rod, otherwise known as the killer of water coolers. Um, he, oh yeah, this guy right. will go ham on water coolers. Uh, if you don't know that reference, just type Pick in Sean Rodriguez water cooler on YouTube and have a yeah. have a field day with that. Uh, time Red for Gardner and TVs. <laughs> yeah. uh, time for Name That War. And if you've never seen this segment of the show, Name That War is when you take a player from the past and we try to guess their career war according to baseball reference using only our baseball archive mind. And today's name is a Devil Ray. A guy who was very good for the Tampa Bay Devil Rays. His name is Rolando Arrojo. What is his career war, according to baseball reference? Was he the the Devil Rays' first ace? Is that correct? You could say that. Okay. Um, Ace... Not really. He was their number one, I should say. Uh, I think he played probably eight to ten years. I'm going to say he ha- he was kind of average-ish, maybe a career 4.25 ERA, give or take. I don't think he ever made an all-star appearance. Probably did not play much in the playoffs either. Um, probably racked up you know, close to or maybe a little bit more than a 1,000 career innings. 
I think uh, single digit war is is the way to go here. I'm going to say 8.9. 8.9 for a one-time All-Star in 1998, a career 4.55 ERA, 700 innings on the nose, an ERA plus of 108, a FIP of 4.56, and his WAR is 9.4. Very good, Kevin. Wow, thank you. Very, very close. Very good. Rolando Rojo, man. Uh, I wouldn't say he was the ace because Wilson Alvarez was the opening day starter, but performance wise i think rolando was the ace because yeah. uh, again he was the all-star that year that uh yeah that devil ray season in 98 was very impressive <sighs> tell you me you have a couple tell- guys replicate that in 2024 that would be nice that's exactly where i was going for like imagine if you could just put in a guy that has 202 innings uh in the 356 era uh 4.2 fip uh that's not happening in 2023 in 2024 for any of the pitchers and that kind of yeah that's kind keep of a dreaming. Little, yeah <laughs> if a guy does that he gets a 200 million dollar contract that's exactly right. <laughs> yeah and orlando was just like one of many doing this so. oh for sure yeah different, different era different era. days for yeah. sure all right uh hope you all enjoyed that uh keep listening keep subscribing keep checking us out Uh, We'll have more to discuss in the coming weeks. In the meantime, thank you for making us your very first listen every day. Stay safe, and we will talk to you later.